All right, today we're gonna show you guys how to make a cool yarn ball um, that basically hides the entire hook. Um, and it's a unique thing that we can do with our yarn because how fluffy the fibers are and how once it gets wet, it fluffs back out to uh, its original size when you make the yarny. So uh, what you can do is make a yarn ball that's bigger than the actual hook. It'll completely cover it when it's in the water, but it also floats because our yarn is more buoyant. So you don't need any kind of floating or corkies or anything like that. Um, fish can't see the hook. Uh, once they get the yarn in their mouth, it's, they have a hard time getting it out. And also, our yarn is so soft that they can bite down and get to the hook. Um, so it's a really cool rig if you're fishing um, bigger water or you want to make more like golf ball size yarnies, uh, which are really popular on a lot of rivers up in Washington. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, you don't need a lot of our yarn, which is kind of the cool thing. What we're using here is two uh, pieces of our yarn with just a small third color as kind of the eye or kind of a dot. Um, and I'm going to show you how to how to make this real quick. So this is a a one aught hook. So that's plenty big. It's way bigger than what we mostly use in the winter, but just to kind of give you an example of the type of hook that um, how big a hook you can use and the yarn will still float it. The nice thing is you don't have to make a super dense uh, yarn ball to be buoyant. So with our yarn you can you can make a, a fairly fluffy yarn ball that once it hits the water it'll fluff right back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out oh, roughly about as much yarn as once it fans out will completely cover the hook on both sides. So about an inch here on this hook. I'm going to do a couple wraps this way at an angle just to lock it down. I'm going to come back under the straw or under the hook. I'm going to go back the opposite direction twice um, maybe three times if you can use a, a stronger thread too this is a a two tendon ear um, Danville's wax fly master plus you could also use a night or a um, like a Kevlar thread or something really strong is probably better for for this but this is what I have on now Wrap uh, that up real tight, and then uh, I do a whip finish five, six times, and I'll just do that twice, um, just to lock it in real good. Now I have a pair of these curved Dr. Slick scissors, the bigger ones here. Uh, you can use regular um, straight scissors, work fine. Um, basically. I didn't have to cut this, but I'm going to just to round it off. Um, so you can see our yarn just flares out like that. I'm going to do the same thing. Try to bring it out about the same distance as the other side. Make one cut. <clears throat> and what the yarn does is It fluffs it out and makes a nice um, round yarn ball. So now you can see it's pretty much covers the hook. I could have made it a little bit bigger. This is a one aught, it's a fairly big hook. But this is not super dense, this yarn. But what it does, the fibers we use, once it gets wet, you take it out of the water. It'll pull up as soon as it gets back in the water. It'll fluff back out. It'll keep the hook covered, and this amount of yarn on this one knot hook will float it all day long. It'll keep it up in the strike zone for fish. So, kind of call that the stealth yarn ball. Um, and this works really well. Even in smaller rivers, uh, the fish like big yarn balls, they like small ones. So, this you can uh, give a shot. Um, especially if you want to not have to add anything to get it to float. So float great and um, 
once the fish takes it in, the fibers grab their teeth, they can't hardly get them out. Um, it's, it's super grabby, our fibers. So they can't get it out of their mouth. As soon as they chomp down, the fibers are so soft, they can smash this easily in the water and they have the hook in their mouth. Um, we're gonna show a little clip of it just in the water, uh, in the sink, so you can see what it looks like when it's underwater. All right, here we've got our, it's about a golf size yarn ball covering up a one-aught gamagatsu or eagle claw hook. Um, we're gonna, you see it floating on the surface there. And this isn't a super dense, you could make them more dense, you could use a little bit more yarn, but um, I like how these ones that aren't quite as um, full, how they fluff back out and they actually have some movement when they're in the water. So, try to get this plenty wet. You notice pull it out of the water it'll kind of shrink up a little bit but as soon as it hits the water you'll see it fluffs right back out so when it's in the water the fibers actually have some movement um, kind of looks like skin depending on which colors you use so you can see I can't I can't get it to sink and this yarn ball is fully covered in water and uh, you can make it a little bit bigger too you can adjust the size for the size of hooks you're using um, so you can cover that hook even more uh, or you could use a slightly smaller size hook um, but this you can side drift all day and it's going to continue to float. Um, you can add some scent. We make a krill anise oil that you can put a couple drops on and it'll it'll smell like that because these fibers are natural fibers. They're not uh, plastic or um, nylon like a lot of other yarns so uh, it actually holds scent um, which plastic doesn't. So uh, put a couple drops on it. It's going to smell like whatever oil or scent you're using. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what it looks like in the water. Um, these work really good for steelhead. Here's some of our little uh, micro egg patterns we made um, in another video, the size of beads. But you can see every color we make is UV enhanced, so it's reflecting UV at 365 nanometers. Um, which is right where a lot of studies show steelhead and salmon trout see UV. Here's our, our gigantic, that's a shrimp with cerise dot. And you can see how it fluffs back out in the water. So it's really visible, especially when the water's off color. Um, but we find that this, um, the UV works really well in, in really clear water too, like in the summer. So you can see every color has its own unique shade. Uh, it's much different than fluorescent, which you're used to seeing when you look at um, stuff under black light, like uh, black light, like hot pink lures will look more orange, whereas these all have their own unique color. So yeah, give it a try. Make some of these big yarn balls. We've also got a video showing uh, regular size nickel and dime yarn balls, how to make those, along with uh, these little micro egg patterns. Great for fly fishing or steelhead fishing.